welcome everybody. We are um, very excited to be making this announcement today about the path forward to saving people money on health care. You know, everybody uh, interacts with health care at some point in their lives. Um, and every person, every family should be able to get the care they need when they're sick uh, without going bankrupt, without losing their home. But in our state and indeed across the nation, far too many families go without necessary services uh, simply due to the high cost of insurance, of out-of-pocket deductibles, of prescription drugs, of health care. And we need to address the high cost of health care straight on. Now, Governor Hickenlooper and the legislature did important bipartisan work to expand Medicaid, to set up our own statewide exchange. These are important linchpins of expanding access here in Colorado. But despite the efforts of the Affordable Care and Patient Protection Act and the implementation efforts here in Colorado, health care costs are still rising. Uh, in fact, they continue to increase. We need to take action to really find and act on the root causes of skyrocketing health care costs and take real action to make care and coverage more affordable for individuals, for small businesses, for the uninsured, even for public employees. There's a lot of departments across state government that handle health care, but there's been no office until today dedicated to helping us save money on health care, and that's what this office will do, and that's what's changing today. Led by Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera, the Office of Saving People Money on Health Care will form the beating heart of our efforts to reduce patient costs for hospital stays, for expenses, to improve the transparency of pricing, allowing for competition, to lower the outrageous cost of prescription drugs, and to make insurance more affordable and achievable. As I said in the State of the State, we aren't giving this office some kind of fancy name to make it sound important. We're giving it a simple name because it is important. The Office of Saving You Money on Healthcare. In our healthcare system, it seems like every group has some sort of lobbyist or someone championing their interests. It could be the hospitals, it could be the insurance companies, the doctors, the nurses, and of course, those are all stakeholders in healthcare. But what voice is often missing? The voice of patients, the voice of the rest of us, the voice of those who are forced to pay too much for health care. This office will focus on identifying and addressing the root causes of the outrageous costs of health care. Not just shifting the costs around from uh, one group to another, but truly addressing the underlying causes of why in this country we spend about twice the percentage of our gross domestic product on health care and they do in almost every other Western industrialized nation, and yet we remain in the middle of the pack on outcomes and results. Specific cost-saving measures that many members of the legislature and our administration are already talking about and proposing are taking action to reduce the cost of prescription drugs by looking at new models to reduce prescription drug pricing, like importing drugs from Canada, providing additional pricing transparency about the drivers of prescription health care costs. House Bill 1 provided transparency for hospital costs so we can better understand and act for what is continually driving those costs up to the detriment of those who pay, whether it's directly out of pocket or whether you indirectly pay through your higher insurance premium. The Chase study released just this week shows there's a lot of work we need to do to bring down costs on the hospital side. And I'll commend our partners in the press, many of which are here today, including Channel 9, for their exposés on the costs and the impact to consumers of high health care costs. It's absolutely critical that we use all the tools uh, both uh, in the independent media and through additional transparency measures to find and act to prevent these from driving up health care costs. We're also very excited about establishing a reinsurance plan at the state to bring down the high cost of insurance for people who buy their own policies in the exchange by preventing those highest cost cases from driving up rates for themselves and for the rest of us. And yes, to increase affordable health care options. We're looking forward to working with the legislature to uh, research the best methods for how to increase competition and drive down costs, including exploring a public option. We also want to look at health holistically and preventative care and healthy habits and lifestyles, diet and nutrition. All of these aspects will go into making sure that we can save people money on health care here in Colorado. This executive order that we're about to sign today creates the Office of Saving People Money on Healthcare in the Governor's Office, led by Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera. 
I'm proud to be joined by many leaders in the legislature in reducing health care costs and saving money for consumers, Representative Dylan Roberts, Representative Chris Kennedy, Representative Julie McCluskey, Representative Susan Lantine, and Representative Sonia Joaquins Lewis. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I hope that's everybody. Anybody that we missed? The majority leader. Oh, uh, yes, he's speaking. The majority leader is in the program. Absolutely. Thank you, Representative Garnett. Um, we also have some members of our cabinet here. Um, uh, we have Kim uh, Bimsteffer, who's here, Patty Salazar, Jill Ryan, and Michael Conway from the cabinet, who are working very closely with our legislators on saving people money on health care. You know, Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera is a perfect person to lead this office, uh, really uh, making sure that she can be active as a patient advocate in saving people money on health care is a large part of the reason that I chose her as Lieutenant Governor, and she will be able to do that in this capacity. Diane has had first-hand experience dealing with the challenges of trying to fight a chronic illness while fighting your insurance company, something that too many Coloradans have experienced, while also raising two girls. I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about her story and, and background and why we're so excited to have her leadership in the state level. Many of you here in the State House know her from her prior service in the state legislature. Uh, but we're looking forward to working with her and the entire team of legislators who are in the room and those who are stuck in committee uh, meetings and can't attend to save people money on health care. Uh, proud to introduce uh, the person who will head up our Office of Saving People Money on Health Care, Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera. I get to stand on a stool because I'm a little vertically challenged. Um, so I just want to thank Governor Polis uh, for that nice introduction. And it's not written into my remarks, but I've been in state government for over 40 years. And I've never seen a governor that has been as passionate about health care as Governor Polis. And I just want to thank you for that. As he said, I know what it's like personally to face impossible choices because you need to pay your health care bills. I know firsthand how important it is to be able to have access to affordable health care. And as many of you have heard, if you had told me 30 years ago that one day I'd be standing before you today referring to myself as Lieutenant Governor of Colorado, I would have thought that you were telling a really cruel joke. Because 30 years ago, I had just been diagnosed with breast cancer and told I wouldn't live five years. As healthcare providers and advocates know well, that a cancer diagnosis can turn one's life upside down in an instant. That year, I lost my job, I lost my insurance, and even my marriage. And I had to figure out how to put food on the table and a roof over, over the heads of my two little girls who were just three and five at the time. And they had to figure out how to cope with the reality that their mom was dying. <clears throat> but with the support of family and friends, great medical care, and a groundbreaking clinical trial, I beat the illness and survived three more battles with cancer. I've lived it personally, but I've also seen through my work that you can't talk about access without talking about affordability. When I worked in customer service at Healthcare Policy and Financing, we would get so many calls from people trying to figure out how to afford their medicine, how to afford to pay their heat, how to afford to pay their food bill, and afford all of their living expenses. When I was the CEO at Susan G. Komen, Colorado, we heard almost daily from people who were terrified about making their mortgage or car payments because they had to pay for their hospital bills. And they also couldn't work while they were in treatment. The cost of our system is such that families are having to make devastating choices between their care or putting, putting food on the table or roofs over the heads of their children. My life's mission is to help people who are facing the same fate that I once did. That's why I'm honored to lead the Office of Saving People Money on Health Care. And I really like what the governor said, that I will be the patient champion. I am a patient. I've walked in their shoes. And my life's work is about protecting patients and ensuring that everyone gets the health care they need and that they deserve. To that end, I want to touch on a few additional priorities that are important to me as the patient champion. The first priority is that every family in Colorado is impacted by high costs but we know that some parts of the state are hit especially hard. That's why one of our impo important focuses will be understanding and addressing the high costs of care in rural and mountain communities. The second priority is that, like the governor said, 
We're going to push to discover new innovative models to reduce the cost of care. And we're going to take the best ideas from our state departments and the best ideas from our stakeholders and advocates on how to make healthcare more efficient. But we also will look at long-term drivers of cost and think hard about how we can address social determinants and promote public health. As the governor said, prevention is cheaper than treatment. And as a patient champion, I also personally believe that prevention is the right thing for patients too. The third priority is that we approach this important work, we must do it in a way that ensures cultural competency and equitable access for all Coloradoans, no matter their geographic location, insurance coverage, income level, race, religion, sex, national origin, language, age, disability, immigration status, or political affiliation or belief. When we say healthcare is a right, Jared and I mean it. And that's why reducing cost is so important. So right now, cost is a barrier to access. By reducing costs, we'll, we'll help businesses, we'll help the state, we'll help the healthcare system, and most importantly, we'll help the patients. I'm confident that by working together, we can make healthcare more affordable for Coloradans. So thank you all for joining us in this packed room for our first important step here today. And again, thank you, Governor Polis, for putting your faith in me as the champion for patients. It's my pleasure to now introduce Majority Leader Alec Barnett. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Governor Primavera and Governor Polis. I am uh, really excited uh, to be here and to uh, be standing with them uh, as they lead on this important issue. I'm House Majority Leader Alec Garnett, and I'm excited to sponsor the legislation to create and fund this critical office. And I can tell you that the House Democrats, many of which are here today, uh, many of which, like the governor said, are doing the people's work, uh, still stand committed in helping lower health care costs for hardworking Coloradans. My colleagues and I here every day, whether or not it's from the western slope, the metro area, or out to the eastern slope, uh, from their constituents and from the people of Colorado about how their cost of living keeps on going up and that they are sick and tired of being ripped off uh, around their health care and prescription drug costs. We've passed legislation in the past uh, to improve access to care, but the cost of health care is still boxing out key priorities in our state and more importantly, our families across Colorado's budgets. We need more pr price transparency so that we can better understand what we are paying for as a state and that consumers are empowered to make decisions um, about where and how uh, they're going to get treated. And that's why our first bill that we introduced in the House will help improve hospital transparency con for consumers. It's being sponsored by Assistant Majority Leader uh, Chris Kennedy, who is a friend and a colleague and a leader on this issue. And we are serious about addressing the out-of-control cost of prescription drugs, which is why we're getting to work on a way to import cheaper prescription drugs from Canada. And we need an office that's not just focused on the delivery of health care, but on the affordability of health care too. Creating this office will help balance out uh, the needs of Coloradans across the state. So again, I want to thank <laughs> Governor Polis and Lieutenant Governor Primavera for making this a key priority. We as a Democratic caucus and legislators know that this is a key priority. We've heard it from across the state. And it is my honor now to introduce uh, Tamara Drangsevit. With the she is uh, with the Family and Intercultural Resource Center in Summit County. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tamara Drangstevit. I'm the executive director of an organization in Summit, Col Summit County called the Family and Intercultural Resource Center. Um, we spend a great deal of time working on all of the social determinants of health, but for our clients, the biggest crisis is certainly access to health care. Um, the stories that I could share are heartbreaking and numerous. The mom, much like the lieutenant governor, who had to make the choice between spending her daughter's college education fund or getting treatment for breast cancer. Um, the property manager, whose pre premium is $938 a month solely for a plan with a almost $10,000 deductible. 
or the family that is not quite there in terms of accessing Medicare who's spending over $2,000 a month on their premiums. For many in the state, health care and access to health care is a challenge. In Summit County, it's truly a crisis. Um, as a social determinant organization, we also work on mental health. Um, and we have seen as a result of this access to health care challenge, our suicide rate in Summit County climbed to two times the national average. This is literally costing people their lives. And certainly there's been progress in the 10 years that I've been coming down to Denver to talk about this issue. The expansion of Medicare, Medicaid has been a huge benefit to our clients. But there is so much more yet to be done. And I am so excited and finally optimistic at some of the decisions that have been made thus far by this administration. Um, certainly the reintroduction of reinsurance, the appointment of Commissioner Conway, who has been in Summit County so many times that he could actually probably claim residency. Wouldn't it advise it. Healthcare is really expensive, um, but he certainly could. And finally, an office that actually understands that we have to find a solution that is actually a solution, not just a Band-Aid. So on behalf of all of the residents of Summit County, for whom health care and access to health care and access to mental health should be a privilege, shouldn't be a privilege, it should be a right, I am so grateful that this, is, um, that this strategy is being pursued. And I am so grateful to the governor and the lieutenant governor for being such strong leaders on this issue. Thank you. Um, and with that, I want to introduce Rachel Wall. Good morning. I am Rachel, as she said. Um, I live right here in Denver, just a couple miles up the road. Um, lived here for about 10 years now. Um, I work as a baker locally, and I am here to talk about a lifelong experience with cost of health care. I came into this world with a rare genetic disease that causes episodes of mass swelling ranging from simply painful to fully life-threatening. I have spent my whole life fighting to be healthy, but from a very young age, seeing denied insurance claims and costly out-of-pocket expenses taught me I didn't deserve it. As an adult, I bounced back and forth between not having insurance at all to having costly insurance that wouldn't even cover much of anything I needed. By this point, I so deeply believed I wasn't worthy of wellness that I stopped even trying to get treatment for my disease. Emergency rooms for life-threatening swelling became my only health care, and I would put even that off until the very last moment. More than once, I sat holding my EpiPen as my throat swelled and wondered if maybe I could get away with not using it this time. Tried to just give it a few more minutes because if I used it, I had to buy a new one. I now have health insurance through my spouse's employer that, along with protections from the ACA, has allowed me to access the care that I need. I have gone from merely surviving to, in many ways, thriving, and I am so grateful. But even this insurance carries a high deductible and ever-increasing premiums, and I still find myself rationing my inhalers some days because they are so expensive to replace. Because wondering if I can afford to be well is so dehumanizing that far too often, I still end up choosing everything over my own health. I fight every day against the learned shame of being less than perfectly healthy. I tell myself I am worthy of treatment. I invest in myself to remember that I am more than the cost of a pre-existing condition. I do Ironman triathlon to remember I am allowed to truly live this life I've been given. I try to believe I deserve it. This is why what is happening here today, establishing this office and addressing the exorbitant cost of, cost of health care is so important. Access to health care gives so much more than treatment, it gives life. I would like to introduce Peg Ellison now to come speak. Hello, and thank you Governor Polis and Lieutenant Governor Primavera. Thank you for this day and the work that you're doing. I'm Peg Ellison from Castle Rock. I'm a cancer survivor and a small business owner. My husband also owns a small business and I'm here on behalf of all business owners in Colorado. When I became a small business owner, it was the most exciting time of my life. And if anybody has started a new business, you know how exciting that is. The hardest part about starting a your own business is health insurance. I was fortunate to be able to be on COBRA for a year. At the end of the year, their premiums went sky high, so I decided to go to private health insurance. 
the insurance broker told me that your insurance is not going to be as good. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Well, what I discovered is the deductibles on a, a group insurance is a lot less than the deductibles in private insurance. So for premiums that we have to pay are going to be close to $17,000 this year. Fortunately, we are able to pay that. But in addition to that, that's if we stay healthy. In addition to that, our out-of-pocket max is another $13,000. So if you do the math on that, the, the gross of that is for the privilege of using my health insurance, I get to pay $30,000 before I even get to take a benefit from that. Now granted, there's probably discounts in there and all that kind of stuff, but we all know how those discounts go. I've been to a physical therapist where if I pay out of pocket, it's $95. If I go through insurance, it's $300. I'm not sure how that math works or how that goes, but it just seems kind of odd. So, you know, if I wasn't, if I didn't have to spend that kind of money on health care, I could grow my business. And this goes for all small business owners. I could grow my business. I could go spend money on other things that would help the economy and grow other small businesses. But instead, I have to save that money and spend that money on health care just in case something happens. Fortunately, as a cancer survivor, I have the best case scenario that I just have to go in for follow-ups and continue to take my medication. I have friends that are not as fortunate, where they have to go in every month and take a very expensive drug. And so if I was them, I would be spending a good portion of my income just to stay alive. And that, that's just not right. So thank you very much, Governor Polis and Lieutenant Governor Primavera for creating this office. And I look forward to all the great things you're going to do. And now I'm going to introduce Rudy Gonzalez. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Rudy Gonzalez, and I am the Executive Director of Servicios de la Raza, Services for the People. Uh, our 46-year-old organization specializes in serving uh, the Latinx, low and moderate income communities across our state. One of our many services includes helping Colorado residents navigate and access the health care services they need. From behavioral health to primary care to chronic disease management and everything in between. We serve people who put off going to the doctor so they can afford to make rent. We serve people who can't afford their medication because of a gap in coverage. We serve people who are already living paycheck to paycheck and struggling to make ends meet where a major health issue could mean financial ruin. One such person was a professional with excellent credit, a young professional and she was making a decent living. At the time, she refused health insurance, saying health insurance was too expensive, and decided against it due to her student loan payments, rent, childcare, food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In a short time, she contracted a serious life-threatening illness and infection. Her health care for this one incident cost her over $100,000. She was forced to file for bankruptcy, ruining her credit, her opportunities for economic mobility, in short, her life at that time, and her families, her children's. Day in and day out, we try to help Coloradans who struggle to afford health care and suffer as a result, but there's only so much that we can do. We need to address the root cause, the systemic cause of the rapid rise in health care costs. And we need to do it as soon as possible to provide relief for hardworking Colorado families, whether they're low, moderate income, or they're unemployed. We need to get this done. We need to start this work. That's why I'm glad to stand here today with Governor Polis, Lieutenant Governor Primavera, because at kitchen tables across our state, Coloradans are desperate to figure out how they can make ends meet while keeping their families healthy, and being able to save for a brighter future. Thank you so much.
We're going to move forward a little bit. If our legislators and members of our program and cabinet want to stand uh, by us, we can crowd in here and make this happen. I'm on this side over here. Diane, you're right here, of course. And we have several candidates. And if there's members of the Ready? Thank you. 